Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Cross. Last time we finished up our business on the Save Kid route, and now we're almost back to parody. I was just tidying up a few things that I had done on one path, but hadn't gotten to on the Do Not Save Kid path. And then I found that this scene changes a little bit if you talk to uh, Lucy, uh, Lucia up on the roof first and then come down here instead of coming down here first. Uh, I did this because I went to uh, Viper or to uh, Hydra Marshes before coming here. So there's a slight variation on the scene. Uh, basically, all that's happened is we've walked in the door. This is the first line of dialogue. I had actually forgot that the scene was slightly different, so I wasn't even planning on showing this off. So anyway, instead of uh, him talking to us and us letting him out, he basically says the same thing, except directly to uh, Lucia this time. We go over here. Oh, yeah, she's actually over here now, uh, realizing that uh, Pip is broken out of his cage. I still think, if I remember correctly, I didn't let him out on my other path there, but he was already out. But I have a vague memory of it uh, playing out incredibly differently on uh, like my first playthrough. Because I could have swore that Pip was here and I left him here. Eh, whatever. Doesn't matter, we get Lucian the party. Again. And I'm just going to... Can I pick this up without leaving the room? I'm going to struggle to get this again, aren't I? Anyway, uh, the only other thing I'll show is when I go to leave. I forgot to fight the robot ahead of time because I'm running two paths and I can't remember what I've done on which path. So I'll show you the fact that you cannot just walk straight out after I finally get this stupid item. OK, I'll show you this real quick. I had neglected to do it on this path because I forgot uh, that I hadn't done it on this path. I thought I did that for the path split. But yeah, you. Uh, you can't get through the gate from the outside, so I have to go all the way back through Shadow Forest all over. By the way, I have done all of the other activities in between paths uh, that I had originally done over on the other path there. And I did manage to get a lucky Pulte's cap in one of the fights with these guys on the way through here. But I'll just meet you outside. Well, there's five minutes of my life I'm not getting back. Let's go kill this thing because it made me go and suffer through fighting about, I don't know, 10 more battles on the way out because the paths are so bloody narrow that you keep running into enemies over and over and over again. And fast forward does not make that any easier. So let's just end you right now and be done with it. Give me an Electro Bolt for my troubles. Yes? Come on, Electro Bolt me. Nope. I don't think you have to open it, but whatever. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Now that the paths have merged, um, we're basically going to do the same thing on either path. So what I did in between episodes is I did Hydra Marshes, I did Water Dragon Isle, and I did uh, most of uh, Viper Manor there. On the other path, I've already advanced to the next point where there will be some reason to go between paths. So anyway, now that we have free access to the world map here, let's go and take a look at some of the areas that we can uh, explore here. The, uh, the mist down there, that's a sequence. You want to avoid that. Uh, this here... Uh, Hermit's Hideaway is the location that Glenn had asked us to go take a look at. Uh, the other island up there we will be uh, going to take a look at shortly. Sea of Eden is down here, but it's in purple, so even if you press the button, you can't go in there. Here is Marbule. You remember uh, back in Guldov, they were saying that uh, this is an island of demi -hume.
and they don't like us. And they throw rocks at us. Great. Yep, they don't like us. What about you? This is a witch doctor, one of the few characters with a name, but no portrait. Most of the NPCs that don't have portraits don't have names either. Humans are an ill omen. 14 years ago, humans were on their way to Marbule. Witnessed the most terrifying storm I had ever seen. Humans never showed up. Sure, they were swallowed by the stone. The same day I heard a rumor. Someone had made his way through the early gates. Hmm. No longer matters now. The elder who knew about the incident passed away years ago. Humans are bad luck. Now leave. Okay. Nothing else in here. Yeah, he doesn't like us. So let's go and talk to everyone and hear how much they don't like us. Hope the black dragon will put humans in their place. Okay. Yeah, most of them don't have a whole lot to say to us. They, uh, they don't like us. Stay away from me. Stay away. Yeah, he doesn't like us. But the um, the music does disappear. I like the uh, the water effects in there, uh, as far as the uh, sound goes. But uh, it kills the music. I do like the music. It's a very unique design for a city. This is the ruling elder. Wow, that new portrait makes him look a lot older than the old one. I think I like the original better. Sadly, in order to, like, they don't let you pick and choose which ones you want to apply. Uh, at least the game proper. There's mods that allow you to modify which portraits and such you use. But generally, if you want the new, you get, you know, the new portraits, the new font, the new uh, backgrounds, the new models, the new portraits, everything. Um, the only condition, he'll help us if we leave. Oh. Sea of Eden? Yeah, what about this Sea of Eden that we couldn't go to? No way to enter it. Poisonous leaves that cause instant death surround the sea. Um, yeah, I think I'll pass. Place is cursed. The eternal flames of the gods are trying to burn away, or burn their way into the hearts of humans. Even the seagulls avoid that place, and they'll go anywhere. Deadly Dragon God sealed a flame in there. Hmm. Time is reversed there. Well, that's one of the most interesting concepts for an area I've heard in a while. You may have already seen the Black Dragon residing in your vill- Really? I thought we weren't even sure if the dragons were real. Been asleep for many a year now. The last ruling elder often spoke as follows. The Black Dream of the Black Dragon. Unable to return, it continues to wander. Hmm. Well, that's all the information he has for us. There is one final cave over here. And this one does indeed contain a massive black dragon who appears to be sleeping. And there's nothing we can do here other than stare at awe at such a massive creature. And listen to the uh, calming uh, intro uh, music there. You sit on the title screen. Anyway. That's almost all we can do here. No items. Except if you talk to this guy who's in his own pool over here. This is G's shop. And even though he doesn't like, you know, non-demi humans, he, uh, he'll still sell to us. But let's chat first. 
dream of expanding the shop. So he'll sell to anyone. I'm gonna make this the biggest shop in El Nido. Well, that's interesting. Let's see what we can buy from this guy. We've got all the uh, status curing elements, all the turn elements, and we have buffs and defa uh, debuffs at long last. This is where you're going to put a lot of the money that you've been accumulating, so I hope you didn't spend it all. Weak minded temporarily decreases foe's magical defense. Three of those, please. Temporarily increases your magical defense. Three of those, please. Imbecile. Temporary decreases in foe's magic. Not the most useful, but we might. Genius. Increase your own power. We will use that sparingly. Bad eye. Temporary decreases foe's hit percentage. Eh, it doesn't do much. Eagle eye. The best element basically in the game. I might have overstocked, but you, you, you want those. <laughs> Low res, uh, temporary decreases opponent's defense. We'll pick up three of those. High res, we'll never use. Numble, uh, decreases physical evade. We'll never use that. Nimble, increases physical evade. We'll never use that. These don't really work. Like, Eagle Eye works because it maxes out your hit percentage at 99%, as I've shown. But, like, these ones, they don't make that happen. I don't even know what they do, to be quite honest. Weaken weakens the uh, foe's attack power. We'll grab some of those. And strengthen. We're also going to want those. You might want to pick up extra if you have it. You probably don't need all of the, uh, the the six of them, but I may end up putting more on. I probably didn't need to do that. And I'm going to pick up up to three of each of the turn elements. We've already picked up one of each over our travels. Um, sure, we'll stock up. We don't need a lot of those. We're probably fine. But yeah, you're going to want to spend a good chunk of money on all that stuff here. Definitely spend the money. It is entirely worth it. A lot of the attack elements, we're kind of reaching the point where we don't need to overload with attack elements. Because as you can see, a lot of the fights we finish off on our own. And we don't really need to worry about it. Here we have the El Nido Triangle. Contains three stones and nothing else. Okay, well, that was the thing. Uh, we already showed Water Dragon Isle. I did go there on this path to pick up the, uh, the pieces of iron and the piece of skelly. Gaia's Naval, it's this massive continent or I guess massive island with huge cliffs, so we can't get up there while we're on the boat. Uh, what else can we do? Yeah, let's go visit this one. There's not much to do here. In fact, is it even on my list of places to go? Oh yeah, it is on my list. It just, there's nothing here, so I jammed it into one small little section. <laughs> Island is considered holy ground by local residents. Taboo to come near it. Hmm. What do we have here? Sky Dragon resides. There's no Sky Dragon. I would have stopped to talk to him, but I was drinking water, so I figured I'd just do it on the way back. Well, this area is awesome. There are no items here, but once again, the, the backgrounds look great. You know, they got the birds. Yeah, I really, I really dig this place. Anyway, let's go fast. But a hundred years before humans from the continent came here, the Draconians and Demi-Humans still existed in great numbers. Now, speaking of the Draconians, 
the uh, I have it in my notes to talk about this at some point over the course of uh, my explorations here. Demi-humans are thought to be descendants of draconians and humans, kind of a, a joint, uh, joint offspring, some point in the past. We don't really know a lot about who the draconians were at this point, but we will learn more throughout the game, and then we're going to get plot dumped at the end that'll really kind of explain things for us. But anyway, I figured I'd uh, at least mention that. Here we have Earth Dragon Isle. You'll notice kind of a theme. There's a lot of uh, a lot of islands that are based around the different dragons. We actually saw one of them, and it was on an island that wasn't named after a dragon. Curiously enough. <laughs> All right. What do you say? Big hole leads to an underground cavern. Okay. Jump in a big hole. Now, it's going to instantly pull you to the left. You don't want to go to the left as there's nothing over there. You want to go over here because over here we have an item. Uh, I guess there is something over there. There's a person to talk to, but there's no item. So that's that. Uh, what do you say? Are you curious or just stupid? Just, uh, I'm just rude by nature. Don't let it bother you. All right. Now, there is an important reason to come here. It's a little bit of prep work for later. <sighs> okay, let's do it. Give me big money. Come on, big money. Success! We're not going to die. Perfect. All right, the enemies here are way more powerful than anything we should be dealing with right now. If you run into more than one of these guys, run. You will die very easily. There are two other enemies around here and are both are incredibly powerful. They're all yellow innate and they all have very high physical defense. The only way to do a lot of damage to them is to uh, attack them with elements that deal a lot of elemental damage. These guys are all yellow, so we want to use those uh, push basher elements that I don't have on this path. Um, might have been... Actually, no, I do have them. I just don't have them set at a good point yet. Wait, let's uh, run here with Glenn and miss. And here's bombs away. This is why this guy is easy enough to deal with, because his kind of gimmick here is he'll throw a bomb at you, and that bomb will do absolutely nothing except for move around from target to target until the battle ends. So yeah, you can see we're not doing a lot of physical damage, so we kind of need to rely on our spells here to do the brunt of the damage. I am not equipped for this place at all. And yeah, like, you can see the amount of uh, defense. I can do absolutely nothing. So, actually, we'll just do a weak attack so that he gets a little more element power for later. Um, yeah, basically, just attack. I haven't equipped any of my new elements yet, nor have I set myself up properly for this area because my brain does not function, apparently. Uh, we'll just go like that. Yeah, see, even like a, like a physical-based tech, not particularly useful. It's all magic that we need in order to uh, finish these guys off. Yeah, see, this guy will jump from place to place. Now, what you can do, if you want, is in order to make him go boom, you need to do damage to him. But as you can listen here, I'm trying to select a different target, and I can't. So when he goes over there, you can't attack him for the moment. So let's Ice Blast this guy. I'll have to reset up my elements after this, but that's fine. God, I miss a lot. Uh, that's not going to do a lot. 
No, that's... I'm probably going to get more damage out of this, to be quite honest. He has huge physical defense. Looks like he's starting to sag there. And so yeah, this guy's going to jump around from place to place. As long as you keep your HP high enough, you should be fine. Uh, here's another meteorite. There's already two whites on the field. Get a little boost. But yeah, all this guy does, other than summon the bomb, is a couple of physical attacks. I am going to have to heal now, because he's hurt me quite a bit there. There we go. And let's see. I don't have white element to use, so heal all it is. As long as you keep your HP above about 80, you should be fine. This guy will not do anything other than switch targets until the end of the fight here you've done enough damage, he's basically like a, uh, a bomb enemy from Final Fantasy games. You deal enough damage, he takes a bit of a hit there. Have anything useful to use? Sure, why not? Should have used the green one, but I think I already used the green one. Eh, whatever. But yeah, it uh, takes kind of three stages, and then... Well, you'll see. I think even these guys have relatively high physical defense, so yeah, it's not going to do a lot. By the way, that's uh, his tech there. This thing will kamikaze you, dealing damage based on the two paths, because I came here in uh, Nikki's path already, uh, off screen. The amount of damage is somewhere between 63 and I think I got like a 74 and a 76. And for defeating them, they have a common uh, Mithril Steel, if you happen to have someone who can steal, and a rare Denoderite Steel, if you happen to uh, get lucky, which I didn't even have in my notes until I got lucky on the other path. Denoderite is the next level up, after Mithril. And we have just found Mithril, but we can't actually use it yet, because we don't know anyone who can forge it yet. So we've already got the next two levels of uh, access, anyway, to the next two levels of equipment, but we can't forge it yet. Uh, so yeah, the other thing, uh, in addition to stealing Mithril, he can also drop a Mithril, and it's his common drop. So I recommend coming in here and getting at least one of them. And the reason why you want to get at least one of them is because they are incredibly valuable. It's going to allow us to fully outfit all of our characters with the gear that we need at a time when mithril equipment becomes available and we need the, I think it's an extra one or it's an extra two so I'm probably going to fight another one but uh, in the meantime let's uh, sort by attack and throw some extra bush bashers on there so that I can run through the next uh, fight there a little faster <laughs> And I will equip the other buffs and debuffs and stuff a little bit later. But for now, let's explore the rest of the area. There's only two more treasures in here. Get a uh, capsule. Yeah, the treasure here is not particularly interesting. There's two more of these guys. Sometimes you'll run into them with other enemies. If you do, run away because those enemies will kill you. Game trolled me. I didn't even get one. <laughs> I didn't get a mithril for that fight. All right. Okay, now I got my second Mithril. Uh, I didn't run into any of the other two enemies. Uh, we will end up seeing them later anyway, but uh, just know that there are other enemies here and they are powerful. There's nothing else we can do here for now, so we're just gonna take our ill-gotten gains and we're going to run away now. Uh, do note that using uh, Guile's Fierce Attack does not target both the bomb and the... Uh, and the uh, Fossicker there, for some reason, it only targets the one at a time. 
And what else? I was going to mention something else. What was it? Brain's not working. Eh, whatever. Can I, can I talk to the thing, please? It's a door. Basically, it's a door. Uh, go down the sand boil. Because, yeah, there's uh, no actual exit from here. But uh, for some reason, you're supposed to figure out that, you know, well, it's not like it's that complicated. It's not like there's anything else you can talk to. Locals call it Earth Dragon Isle, the land where the dragon sleeps. Nothing about a dragon. It could be a hoax. This island used to be covered with sand. See the big hole in the middle? It's where the quicksand was. It's still a mystery how all that sand disappeared. Hmm. Interesting. There's a lot of information that the game gives us that won't really make sense until a point where I might remember to mention it <laughs> way later in the game, or on a second playthrough is where you're going to figure out a lot of this stuff. All right, what else we got here? We got our three items. We got a couple pieces of mithril. Those are important. Um, the other two enemies that are there are called Rock Roach, which has a denoderate common drop, but they're... I think... I don't think I was able to defeat it. I might have been able to defeat it. I can't remember. Either way, if they're strong, they do a lot of damage. Again, high physical defense. Uh, there's also an enemy called Yellow Belly, which has an Earth Charm Common Steel, if you still have the Thief in the party. And I could not defeat those guys. Those guys were way too powerful. Now here, press the button on nothing, and we find a little tiny island all to itself with smoke coming out. And then, again, no indication that there's anything there. Press the X button again. And we have found a very well hidden and a really cool looking house. To be honest, I would be in paradise if I happened to live here. Hello. Oh. A lot more of us when I was a kid. Used to live south of Arnie Village. Used to go play at the Divine Dragon Falls. Oddly enough, there's very few locations that are south of Arnie Village on the main continent. And I'm guessing, based on the fact that he says he went to the Divine Dragon Falls, that it was also on the island. So I'm not exactly sure where he's talking about, other than maybe... Uh, oh god, what's the, the place on the way to Opasa Beach? The one that you always go through. Ah, whatever. So I would guess they might have lived there, but it's not like it's much of a village. But yeah, there's not a whole lot here. Other than the fact that it's a really cool looking house. No music. It's all ambience. For a game with a great soundtrack, sometimes... The music is really good at, uh, like, the music direction is incredibly good at times, and there's just a couple of minor blunders that I will point out as we get to them. But, uh, yeah, other than that, there's a lot of times where the game just decides to go ambience, and it usually works. Now here, you can't go in that, because it's, uh, it's a one-way inlet that, uh, whee, shoots you out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got here? What else do I have to do here? Well, we might as well go visit this place now. The Isle of the Dam. We've heard a few things about this place. Uh, issues involving Karsh. Oh. You may recognize the music. This played when we first met our straw doll friend. That sound sounds like creatures scurrying around to me. And it's our footprints or our footsteps or whatever. It sounds so creepy. And that's a very scary hole to go into. 
but it contains mixed bones. I don't know which bone is which. Connect whatever. Oh god, he's singing. Alright, I'll shut up. Thank you! Thanks a lot, I'm finally in one piece. If you remembered to get all of his pieces over the course of the game, and I have shown them off, remember on Guile's Path, the one remaining piece that I didn't show getting is in the Shadow Forest. So, may, uh, yeah, Shadow Forest. Well, I, I don't think I showed the one in Hydra Marshes on this path either, but uh, I did show where to get both of them. I just happened to show that on Nikki's Path. But I did go back in between episodes to make sure to pick them up. Once you have all of his pieces, you will get the line that, you know, we've uh, got all the pieces. We'll meet again someday. And at that point, he will return the favor. Uh, I don't need that. You know what? Sure, we'll show it. There's nothing much else that we can do in here uh we can't progress any further than we are there is one enemy in here and that's this one this is called airframe airframe is kind of way too powerful for us at this point he has a mithril common steel and a seal all element with, as a rare drop which is something we don't have access to up until this point Power Dive! That's on a black innate character. That does reduced damage to him. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, there's, as far as I know, no possible way of killing them at our current level of power. Uh, so yeah, don't uh, don't fight them. Also, you can run in the water. I only realized that as I was running through here on my test run. I always thought we were locked into the path. There is one more item here, but it is down all these stairs. Not that it's particularly valuable, but I might as well show it. Nyeball. Sounds about right for this area. If you can see, like, there's skulls and bones just littered everywhere. This place is absolutely insane. The creepiness factor combined with the music is just over the top. Plus the bubbling in the water down there. It's a nice little touch. I, yeah, I don't want to be there anymore. Let's go. <laughs> this place creeps me out. Okay. With that in mind... We've explored most of the islands around here. I don't think there's any advantage to going back to uh, Guldov right now. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Already been here, we've been here, we've been there. All that's left is the White Fog, which, well, we were supposed to go to uh, Fort Dragonia and Mount Pyre. Well, there's a red-looking mountain over there, so I'm guessing that's Mount Pyre. Just, just a thought. But before we do that, there's one more place that I would like to stop off at before we head over to Hermit's Hideaway, where Glenn directed us to go. That is Termina. If you remember when we came here earlier... Clock hasn't moved in ages. Skelly is indeed home. Have I made fun of his name yet? Skelly for a skeleton? I'm sure I have, it's stupid. Most of the characters' names in this game are pretty dumb. Now, if you remember, I know he looks like a skeleton to you and me, but uh, the grandmother is uh, suffering vision loss. So we don't know for sure 
if she can like really see Skelly or if it's, uh, you know, kind of mumbling her way through it. You've got to assume that she can't see very well. <laughs> I'm just happy you're back, even if you are dead and somehow still here. Not exactly sure how that works, but then again, I'm supposed to be a ghost too, so who knows. Don't cry so much. My clothes are going to get wet. How do you produce tears? <laughs> Video game. <laughs> Don't hold back. Tears of joy. And with that, to have Skelly come back at all. Leave me with Grandma for a while. Sure thing. Somewhat unique appearance. I think you can probably figure it out. I'm not sure why you're not running scared, but to each their own, I guess. Hop back in here. Yeah, you say the same thing. Thanks, man. Thanks to you guys, I can hang out with Grandma again. If there's anything I can help with, sure. And Skelly became the life of the party. Fantastic. That's one of the best puns I think they've had. <laughs> I like that one. Skelly is... There he is. Skelly is a black innate character. He's a skeleton, I guess that kind of makes sense. His stats are average. Nothing particularly special. I didn't really go over Glenn's stats, but Glenn's stats are fantastic. Look at those stats. Like his agility is a little low, but that's a babe. That doesn't matter. Everything else is pretty high to average, but look at that uh, strength stat compared to anyone else that we have. Even Potial, even got Potial beat. And Glenn is, well, one of the better characters in the game. Uh, we're going to keep Guile for now because I can uh, make some use of him going forward. But yeah, we got a new party member. And that's kind of important. Now, I've already gone and done a little bit of this off screen. But uh, now's the time to fully outfit ourselves with iron equipment. Including armor this time, since we finally have some more armor to make use of that. And, okay, well, we're going to do this. There's this amazing material called Rainbow that can be smithed into fine items. Went searching for it, but never found it. Stopped searching when Karsh was born. Yeah, by the way, these are Karsh's parents. They just kind of toss that in without really explaining it all that much. The blacksmith and his wife are Karsh's parents. Now... Don't ask me how, but somehow Karsh does not have the same accent as the two of them. Anyway, um, we have a new character that I would like to take a look at. Lucia had copper gear. I don't care about stealing that. Uh, who else we got here? Skelly has, comes with iron equipment just like uh, someone else. And so we're going to steal the iron mail and give you an ivory mail. I would steal the glove too, but I don't apparently have a crack glove to give you. Yeah, you can't unequip a weapon. You have to always have equip a weapon equipped. You don't need that. So anyway, now we can forge weapons. I've already forged the weapons that I need, so I still have the Swallow. We have the Dagger from earlier on in the playthrough. I might have to get rid of that. We've got a glove that I can't unequip. Uh, if you need a bone glove in order to... I can just do that one, to be quite honest. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. Uh, so now I can get access to that Iron Glove. Not that I plan on using it right now. And I forged an iron sword off screen. Shouldn't I have one more piece of iron? 
Oh, right. On this file, I didn't get the rare drop from Marcy, so I'm short one. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to sacrifice something that I have. So we need to disassemble armor. First things first, that iron vest. We can disassemble that. We don't have any more use for that. That's fine. And what else? I want to keep the dagger because I'm probably going to use it. Got the iron sword. I'm going to do the glove here because I don't plan on using that glove. So let's get uh, that off Skelly there so that I have it. Ideally, you don't have to uh, take anything apart. Um, taking apart equipment is free well, and you get the materials involved. So we get the piece of iron that we need. The sad thing is, is if you want to uh, forge yourself new weapons, or in my case, I want to do accessories, then you're going to need... Oh, that's where it is. I have an extra iron mail. Yeah, okay. I was wondering, it's like, where the hell is my other piece? So we're going to sacrifice that one as well. This is also one that uh, Skelly came with. So we'll disassemble that, but when you want to uh, forge new stuff, you're going to have to pay for it. Uh, no, not disassemble. Thank you. So, yeah. What? My brain is not functioning. How is it that I keep screwing this up? I want to disassemble things that I don't need and I keep buying stuff. I just bought another one of those. I want to disassemble these. God damn it. Oh, God, I can't do anything. I just wanted to get some helmets. It's not that hard. <laughs> anyway, now we've got helmets. I already did the armors off screen. Uh, so now we've got a little more of a level up, a little more defense. It's only one more point. The helmets, for the most part, aren't massive when it comes to offering you great defense. But it's better than nothing, and I want to make sure I have as much defense as I can. I did win a Pultis cap uh, when I was fighting the Gloops. Not that that matters, we'll soon have access to a lot more of them anyway. Uh, all iron equipment is good. Uh, you have a magic ring and a silver loop. Oh yeah, the uh, sight spoon needs to go on to you. Uh, the dancing shoes were a rare steal. What do those do? Increases my evade by six. I'm never going to use those. But they're there. Sadly, there's no way of organizing your items in here, uh, and they just go in any which order you, that they go into. It kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Anyway, we're fully outfitted now. We've been to pretty much every location we can go to. So next time, we're going to go where we were directed to go uh, a couple episodes back when uh, we first spoke and got Glenn in the party. There is an old man that lives on an island to the, uh, I guess it's to the east here, he said, the northeast. And that is indeed this one, Hermit's Hideaway. But that's pretty much all the time we have for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.